So regarding monetary policy, the objective of course is to define monetary policy and in here the policies tools are not about money supply and interest rates. It's more than that, right? You should know this chapter 5.2 subtopic is the main section of this entire chapter. Right? The fiscal policy one is not so important because but I can still ask you on the solution and so on and the direct, right? So I will now off my webcam and start. First of all, monetary policy is proposed by Milton Friedman. I believe you need to know a little bit on Milton Friedman because you really know John Menekin's in previous articles that I gave you since week one and also a little bit of his story during the when the I introduce this John Menekin's chapter two, right? As a result, I think you should also know a little bit on Milton Friedman. So let me just type Milton Friedman. It's a Nobel Prize winner. Nobel Prize. Okay. Professor Milton Friedman awarded 1976 Nobel Prize Memorial Prize. You can find all these different press in here. So this is his speech, for example. Right, this is speech, but I don't want to look at his speech because you are not interested in the speech anyway. I want to look at the biography. For yeah, I forgot to write Milton Friedman. Okay, let's look at the Milton Friedman biography. Yeah. Right. Hmm? Don't have one. Oh, I have to look at that one by one already. Wait. Hang on. Uh. This will take me some time. They changed the tab a little bit already. 1976. By the way, this year, who, who is the winner last year? It's shared by 3% for economics. More time, see. Oh, press lecture also very important. Let me also open up this later on. I want to share with you. As you can see, the title of the lecture is Inflation and Unemployment. So you can see how important it is, right? For the press lecture. As for the biography, why can I find biography? Mm -hmm. ah, there, there, there. Okay. All right, let's have a read. Who is Milton Friedman? Born in July 31st, 1912 in Brooklyn. Fourth and last child and first son of blah, blah, blah. My parents were born in blah, blah, blah. Later part of interwar, they emigrate, which means good. First thing, you didn't know. Emigrants also get win no press. Good thing, right? Good thing, right? Fiscal policy always have political influence picture. Both also will have political influence. Okay, Joel noted. In both policies always have influence. Okay. Monetary policy actually also have influence, not only fiscal. But fiscal policy is the one who, the minister who like to blah, 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 blah. Every day they will appear in news. It looks like they have more political influence than another one. Does it make sense, Raphael? Does it make sense? Because citizens, they also care more about fiscal policy, right? It's regarding subsidies and tax. Are you, are you more sensitive with subsidies and tax or you are more sensitive with money supply and interest rate? Right? Which one you were, when you read news, you will go and read. Like, will you, will you be 
concerned about the increasing tax or decreasing tax more than the interest rate and money supply, right? So a lot of them, they place more emphasis on fiscal, but doesn't mean that it's more important, right? That will bring us to Milton Freeman. First thing, if you your name has what Richard, uh, Richard, Alfred, Alvin, all these all these people, the name itself will really win already. Almost win Nobel Prize already. So make up a good word, right? Because a lot of Nobel Prize winner they are Robert la, Alfred la, Alvin, la, right, and so on. Second thing, let's look at Milton Freeman again. Along with my sisters went to high school, father died. Good, which means of orphanage also can win Nobel Prize. Right. Then awarded scholarship, right? Then after that, what happened? Initially, yeah, this one I want to show you. I specialize in mathematics, intending to become an actuary. And so far as to take actress SM, but passing surreal, but also feeling surreal. Can you see that? Nobel Prize winner also feel and good thing. Because he feel he turned to economics. That's why I told you right, actually very hard, right? Told you right. Right. But don't worry, feel already he still can win Nobel Prize, economics prize. Right? Then he met a few person, become his professor, blah 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 blah. Then got another scholarship. Okay. And still can study in applied mathematics because it cons partial because it's maths, right? And that is not what I want to show you actually. The most important part is here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the most important part. Please pay attention. Personally, the most important event of that year was meeting a shy, withdrawn, lovely, and extremely bright fellow economic student, Rose Director. We were married six years later. Wow. After that, he became my idol, seriously, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you would agree? He, that time was already a professor, I guess. I can't remember. A professor met a student and married a student. Wow, that is so mind blowing, seriously. Right? How many of you were with Milton Freeman suddenly become my idol? Married a professor, married a student. Do you agree? Show of hands. No one. <laughs> That's the only part I want to show you. The rest, I don't think you are interested anyway. But another thing you need to know is um, if you want to become Nobel Prize Economics Laureate, you have to know some Nobel Prize winner before, like George Stigler. This one also very important, Simon, Simon Kuznet. He met a lot of this type of people. He is the one assisting Simon Kuznet, which means Simon Kuznet is like his professor and maybe he's like working for him. For a while. Simon Kuznet, you know who is Simon Kuznet? Yeah, that's the only thing I want to I want to actually share with you, lah, to be honest. The other other parts not so important. No, I'm not trying to say something to I just say that he's my idol. Right. In terms of economics, I also have my economics idol. In terms of K pop, I also have my K pop idol, that's all. Right? Uh, that one just kidding. Do you know who is how many of you know? Do you know who is Simon Kuznet? Anyone? A show of hands. Or maybe just put two if you don't don't know who is Simon Kuznet. Type in two. Two, two, two. Just one two. Okay. All right. He is known as the father of GDP. If you're wondering why you need to study GDP, that's him. Okay. Simon Kuznet is the one that created GDP. So if you want to go and score him, go and score him yourself, right? Yes. Yeah, Joy, you, you you make it sounds like sugar daddy. Eh? Do you know? I don't know what's your what's your purpose on that. Right. GDP daddy, oh my god. Why you don't name himself after it? What you mean what? Daddy measure? You mean name himself what? Kuznet measure? What you mean? <laughs> Simon measure. Oh, ah yeah. Okay, so GDP previously, before Simon Kuznet created GDP, actually US president, they used the sales of cars and houses to measure their economy, whether it's doing well or not, which is not so accurate. 
and because of that, now they turn to GDP. Simon Kuznet won the price as well, right? That is a little bit on that. That's all for biography. On the lecture, right? Press lecture, you can see that in the press lecture, there's inflation and unemployment. What he argued was this Phillips curve. Right? This is the Phillips curve that I showed before. It's not so accurate, you see. It's too simple already, you see, right? Maybe you know some symbols like that. The differentiation here, here, here. Then after that, he say this one have to be changed. The Phillips curve is too simple. I should add a few more things inside there. Uh, looks very familiar, right? All this DBDT, DBDT, right? Uh, this is how we do our economics, right? Continue on. Differentiation. Then put some curve. Then put some tables. Blah, 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 data. Then he say in the end, conclusion, right? That's all. Then he win the Nobel Prize. Where is it? Okay, where is it? If you want to win Nobel Prize in economics, it's very easy. You just need to prove that Adam Smith is wrong. Right, that's all. That is for Milton Friedman. So the definition of this monetary policy is a method again. It's a policy a method used by the central bank or reserve bank to change the money supply indirectly and indirectly. Now it's a little bit different. Indirect interest rate, not money supply and interest rate. It's money supply and indirect interest rate. I will show you why later in order to influence the ED, output income and unemployment. Of course, I can make it expansionary. I can also make it contractionary as well, right? Just if I want to change the this to expansionary, and what I need to do is just to increase money supply and decrease interest rate indirectly to decrease unemployment. This is what I'm going to write if I'm talking about expansionary. If I want to talk about contractionary, I just need to change the direction a little bit, just put decrease money supply, increase interest rate indirectly to decrease inflation. That is what I'm going to write. If I were you, you should do something like that. Right? So the objectives of monetary policy basically is to maintain this one, price stability within the narrow range. What is the range again? Let's see whether you can answer or you remember or not. Inject. What's the range? Remember or not? What's the range? Huh? Cannot be la. I already mentioned many times I am. Anyone can help? Anyone can help him? What's the range of inflation that we should maintain to maintain price stability? Hmm? Yep, between 1 and 3%. Does that make sense? Must be maintained between 1 and 3%. Okay, so please remember that. That's the like almost the last sem last part of our semester already. Like. So you must remember that, okay? We only have like how many weeks? Right? Like a few weeks. So it's one and three percent. Huh? Second, they can also use the monetary policy to boost economic growth. This one obviously to improve the standard of living. Third one, they can use it to eliminate fluctuations and production, which means the business cycle again, the one that I showed you before, employment. And the last one is to achieve full employment resources. Last time, why I showed you the Jenna Yellen. Jenna Yellen is too focusing on, I forgot which one already. Forgot, too focusing on maintaining this one. 
So she did not fulfill another objective of monetary policy. That's why she got fired. And actually, the real reason, now this is the reason they, the government give when you want to fire someone, right? But the real reason is because Janet Yellen is too short, previously, right? The real reason, last time when Donald Trump is the president, Trump might have renominated Yellen for Fed if she wasn't too short. So basically, Janet Yellen also got hardcore unemployment before. <laughs> Does that make sense? Janet Yellen also got hardcore because what is hardcore? One of the hardcore is discrimination because she's too short. Like that, Donald Trump are very a lot of nonsense one. Nominate people based on height. Right. That is the real reason. The official reason is because she focused too much on one of the objectives, never focused on all. Right. Same like all the governments are, they always give excuse. Actually, the intention is different. So another thing you need to take note when before we go on to financial sector is how the bank earn money. How the bank earn money is a little bit different from what you think. Okay, before I tell you what you, what is the real reason, what is the real way how the bank earn money, can you please tell me how the bank earn money in your own perspective? How the bank earn money in your own perspective? Please tell me, let me know. Or you want me to assign someone? Let me assign someone. How the bank earn money? Dylan, what do you think? Interest, yeah, I know. Right, interest. You're right. And same for who else? Which one was it? Yep. Joel, correct. Dylan, correct. Fernando. Yep. Fernando actually is the closest one. Right, fine. What do I mean by that? Just think about that, this I meant. You think it's only one time, right? The savers lend the money. to the banks and then the banks give them some interest rate which is usually lower like 1% then the banks lend the money to the firms right and then they charge higher percentage for example 5% this is how they earn money right right so they, they will earn the 4% profit in the gap the interest rate gap that is just one of the way they send them. that is just one of the way Actually, what you don't know behind the scene is like that, right? What you don't know behind the scene, wait, no, this one is not yours, right? 15 one, group two. Ah, that's one, All right? Behind the scenes like that actually, the firms borrow money, to do investment, right? Right? Do they withdraw all the cash or they still put inside the account? Which one? I mean, cash or account? The bank, when they lend the firm's money, they transfer to their account or they give them cash. Jingit, really? Uh, if I borrow 5 million, the bank straight will pay me cash. Uh, Jingit. Dylan, what do you think? I borrow 50 million also. Okay, never mind. I give you cash 50 million. You think what? Kidnap kidnappers. Uh, right? Uh, you too, uh, Dylan. One more is who? It's now Dylan also. Uh, yo. Right? Usually I transfer to the account, right? Yeah, right. Give you Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin already fallen, bro. Jermaine, do you buy any Bitcoin? Jermaine? Gone already, I tell you. Like Humpty Dumpty already, you know. Last time I post in my... Did I post my Facebook or IG? Humpty Dumpty. Like Humpty Bitcoin. -y. 
four on the ground. All right. The transfer, the bank transfer to the firm's account. And this account, for example, the five million will be inside as a another uh, another round of five million. Then the bank can use this same five million to lend it to another firm, right? To lend it to another firm. Then this firm maybe this firm the five million pay use this five million to pay for salary, for example. Pay for salary. We pay nowadays. We pay cash or pay account. Pay to their account or pay to cash. Pay to their account, right? This five million transferred to the labor salary account is still under account, which means this five million again is like the savings can be lent to another firm, right? The same five million can be lent to another firm account. Right, transfer to your account really. And this maybe this firm use it to do investment. For example, to buy some machineries or factories or tools, maybe to buy tractors. And this investment five million will be transferred to this tractor company account. And the bank will think that this five million account is the new money and lend it to another firm using the same five million. Can you see that the same five million? How much money that they created? Okay, can you see that online student? No, sorry, all the students are online now. Can you see that how much money the same five million is multiplied into millions and billions? Right, repeat that. Okay, now since you don't understand this. Let me just do it properly this time. All right. When the bank lend out the money to a firm number one, right? To firm number one, for example, five million, then this five million is going to transfer. To the firm's account. Usually it's known as a check account, depends on which country you're talking about. Can be check, this check, check, check account. Does it make sense first? First of all, does it make sense to you? Hang on, Joel. We have another name for that. Fine, so far, okay. But this money do you think when it appears in your statement like five million in your statement do you think there is really the five million that they put inside the account or it's just digits like how many zeros inside your your statement or your savings account or your your banking online banking they are just digits right they're just some they just transferred the zeros only Right, they don't even transfer the real money to your account. Right, what they need to do is just transfer the zeros, like they just change the number, the number inside your bank account. That's all. Okay, firm number one decided to use this five million digits to buy a factory, for example. Buy a factory, right? This five million. Will be transferred to a property developer account. Does it make sense? I want to buy a factory, I need to transfer the money to the property developer, right? Like, like property developer in Malaysia is like Eco World, SP Setiaan, LBS, right? So after I transfer, this 5 million is literally like a new money to the bank to lend out again. 
because it's like I transfer this account to this account, then this account is like a new account, right? Like, like this this one become I, I deposit my deposit means what I'm a saver, for example, because I haven't used the money yet, right? I'm a saver in your bank. So this saver money will be used again, right? This is the same five million will be used again, right? To do another round of lending to another new firm. Right? Can you see that? Can you see that? And this can happen in many, many rounds. Right? This happens in many, many rounds. That's why it's not only the 4% that you earn, like 5% minus 1% that you earn for one round. It is like many, many rounds. That is how the bank make money. Right? Unfortunately, I was born too late because they already stopped the issuing of license for banks. Otherwise, I would have been opened up the bank, right? Because we are just, what we do? We just need to use people's money, not even my money. And then I use your money to earn more profit. And then I can lend it to like one time, one sum of money, I can lend it to 50 customers, right? That is how we earn money. Does it make sense? In banks, in banks, right? And this is known as the credit multiplier. It's not multiplier. Multiplier is related to government spending. Okay, when the bank create the credit, it's known as credit multiplier. Banks cannot print money, but banks can create money out of thin air. Okay, now they don't even need to print. Like actually, Bank Negra also do print it. But anyway, we just assume that Bank Negra can print money. Other commercial banks they can create money. Does it make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Interesting, right? Except for one. Part of the world, uh. except for Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong commercial banks they print money. Okay, Hong Kong commercial banks. If you went to Hong Kong before, they are a little bit special. Hong Kong central bank they don't print. They ask their commercial banks to print. Okay, you can see in here is like. In here, if you see properly, can I see the bank word? Just another one. Okay, maybe this one you can see. Maybe find a clearer one. Ah, this one. If you see this one, right? For example, this note is issued by HSBC. Can you see that? They can print. In Hong Kong, right? And another one is issued by. Let me see whether this one is the same one. Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank. In here, right? Still the same HSBC. Ah, ah this one. So you can see this one is standard chartered. Can you see that? Ladies and gentlemen. Hong Kong is special a little bit because they ask their banks, the commercial banks to print. The rest of the banks, they are just creating money. Okay, this is how they earn money. Make sense? Right? What is it related to money supply? Later I will explain. But you need to just know this credit multiplier first and it can cause a bank run. How the bank can go bankrupt? Any, any, any idea? Why the bank can go bankrupt? Pasha? Why the bank can go bankrupt? No. Because they lend it to too many people, right? too many companies, right? And 
there will be some day that when there are too many people, too many savers want to withdraw money at the same time. That is when they have this trouble. Unfortunately, all these are loans, right? Loans are long term, right? If we want to make a bank bankrupt, very easy only. You just need to ask the entire Malaysia population to withdraw money at the same time from one bank first, right? It usually, well, they withdraw money. Then suddenly the bank say, no money, no cash, gone. They lose confidence. Then it will affect others to go and withdraw from other banks as well. When other banks also, all of them withdraw too much money because they cannot straight away like call them a hey, firms. A lot of people want to want to call, want to withdraw their money right now. Can I just ask you to pay back earlier? Can they do that? These are long term. However, the savings account are short term, right? I can withdraw my money anytime I like. So this will lead to no confidence to this bank and this bank become bankrupt. When one bank bankrupt, other banks will also become bankrupt because the citizens will start to go to another bank to withdraw money and go to another bank until all the banks become bankrupt. Right, this is how we make the banks become bankrupt. That's for bank run. Also, I'm going to use it later. Right. For credit multiplier, you don't need to do calculation. You will need to know this because credit multiplier, you are going to use it for calculation in uni. In year one, it's a compulsory paper as well. So that is for credit multiplier and bank run. When all the banks become bankrupt, we call it bank run. Right, we call it bank run. Just remember that. So during a recession, what we usually do is expansion monetary policy during a recession, right? Expansion monetary policy. We will increase money supply and decrease interest rate. Then we lower borrowing costs, high investment as a result. Then this one is all, actually are all nonsense right there, to be honest. This one, you learn this like 160 years old of theories already. Very, very old theory. Employment income and output will increase and the economy will grow. This is what you usually do. Okay, for contractionary, Contractionary is during a boom time, we want to decrease the price level. It's also nonsense. They say they will decrease money, so increase interest rate. Until now, never increase interest rate. And consumer will feel poorer. The sales will drop. Employment income output will fall. And they will achieve price stability. Right? However, This one, you can think about that. Usually when we talk about increased money supply, the previous one, we say what? Print more money, right? Print more money. Decrease money supply. Why no one asked me before? Does that mean that we collect the money and burn the money? Do we burn more money? What do you think? Rafael, I will talk about that later. Not not today, maybe maybe next next time. So when we talk about decreased money supply, why no one asked me before? Fernando, do we burn the money? If increased money supply means print more, right? If decreased money supply means what? Burn the money. Right? We want to decrease money. Fernando, is it correct? Is that you, Fernando? sitting on a yacht just like that right look at fernando ladies and gentlemen is it a yacht just like fernando sitting on yacht okay and then bringing some girls want to show off to the girls then use the money and burn for steamboat purpose you know hot pot you know i use the money to make sure my hot pot continue to have fire inside so that the fire will not die is it what we do fernando what do you think? I already pin you for all. Maybe I should pin for everyone. Spotlight you for everyone, so that people can see your your picture here. Is it? Does that mean what? What we mean? We burn the money. 
What do you think? The rest, what do you think? Is it what we do? Burn the money using the hot pot, just like the movie you say. Burn the money for hot pot. Is it what we do? To show off, to decrease money supply, this is what we do. In order to maintain the warmth, the boiling water, what we do? We burn the money. We handsome. La. Yeah, la, of course. Uh, I think Fernando is not handsome. I don't know where handsome one or not. Right? But every, any day, anyway, I will just stop spotlighting. Because Fernando picture just pop up like just, he's like living in a luxury yacht. Shooting this photo, I'm not sure. Right? This is what I want. So, what's the answer? How do they decrease money supply, ladies and gentlemen? Depends, Joel. Depends. Saving money can also be lending money. Saving equals to investment. Remember that? Only we, if we really want to reduce money supply, actually, we should burn the money. But of course, no one, no, no government do that. Right? We don't burn the money. So what we do, we keep it in the vault. Right? This one will be linked to the next part lah, later on. So please remember, after we we get the money back, we keep it in the vault. You know the vault? The vault is where you have this, you know, what is pin number and then this one you have this face recognition scanner this is again where your tom cruise and james bond go and steal the face of people then make it a 3d mask then put in the mask put in the face then deep dive into the ocean then have to count how many seconds then the server would run again that fan then otherwise it would be too hot blah 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 blah. then they go inside and steal the money that is the what right does it make sense first sense so far they keep it in the wall they don't want to let the money go out okay how later so monetary policy together they actually have five tools this one we already cover most of it i only introduced one more diagram right then the mean one is another four this one got two more like so it's another five Open market operation increase, reduce, bigger reserve, increase, reduce in discount rate and minor tools. So money supply, nothing new. Just a summary. In your ebook, your ebook put all the expansionary tools first, then only contractory. I think comparison is easier. So I put expansionary and contractionary together. Alright. So obviously it's reduced interest rate. Consumption increase, this one all is done. Investment increase, this one done. The only thing that I never covered before is government. Actually, government can also borrow money, right? If they reduce the interest rate, they can borrow their money at a lower interest rate as well, right? Oops, hold the share screen. Up. Oops, sorry. So, what I just mentioned is this one right reduced interest rate this one usually covered consumption covered investment increase the only thing that i lie to you is this one last time remember i talked about government spending must be equal to tax remember in the two sec in the four sector model g must be equal to t Do you remember Kevin? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, actually I like. Alright, actually I like. Government actually can spend more than they have in a tax revenue. They can also borrow money. So borrow money also they have their own interest rate to follow. And when they ask their reserve bank to reduce interest rate, they can borrow more money to finance their spending so government spending is also going to increase when they are doing expansionary monetary policy for contractionary 
it will be related to increased interest rates, right? Consumption will decrease, investment will decrease. And at the same time, government spending will also decrease because now they can borrow lesser money to fund their spending. So why just now in my definition, I mentioned that it is indirectly influenced interest rate is actually related to this diagram here. Right. I told you before, money is not resources. Right. How many of you remember me saying that? How many of you remember me saying money are not resources? Show of hands. No one? Really? Money are not resources. Right? Then money must be a good. Not very the good, the good, this good, huh? Good or services that good. If money is a good, then there will be a price for money. Right? Quantity is still on the horizontal axis. Then what is the price of money? I cannot use RM to represent RM, right? The price to represent the price doesn't make sense. So any idea? What is the price of the money? Georgina. What's the price of the good? Usually when we use normal good, right? When we want to draw a micro diagram, like that. For example, Captain America show. Sorry, I'm writing face to face mode. A little bit messy. So we will put price. This is RM, for example. This is RM. But if this is a money, then I cannot put RM there because this is the RM already. So what should I put there in my price? So what is the price of money, ladies and gentlemen? What is the price of money? Georgina, you haven't answered it. Georgina, are you there? It's your turn, though. No? I don't know. You have no idea. All right. Actually, the price of money is interest rate. Okay, to be more exact, it should be real interest rate. Real interest rate. That's why we use R to represent. Yeah. That's why we use R to represent. R in economics, small letter represent real interest rate, which means after we remove the inflation effect. Right? If the price of money is like that, then it makes sense. Money demand, the higher is the interest rate, the lesser quantity demanded we want. Right? We don't want to demand some money, we want to keep in the bank to get an interest rate, for example, or we want to borrow lesser. If the interest rate goes down, then we want to demand more of money. That is for money demand, so it's still down sloping. However, money supply is perfectly inelastic. Why is that? Hong Jun. Why money supply is perfectly inelastic? I perfectly would it. Uh, not sure. Because as a reserve bank, when I print money, I don't need to look at price. Don't look at the price. I don't look at interest rate to decide how much money I want to print. It's already all recorded like this year, I plan to print how much, right? Does it make sense? That's why they are totally not sensitive to the price. They already decide before the, the year begins, they already decide how much money they want to print this year. It's not really, not really related to the interest rates. However, since interest rate is the, pr is the price, the more money we have, okay, it will be less scarce, which means there will be abundance of money. Abundance of money means the value of the money the price of money will go down. So it's actually indirectly influencing the interest rate. 
okay, indirectly influencing the interest rates. Does it make sense? More money we have, lower is the value. It's just like Zimbabwe, you use it to wipe your buttocks. That's all. It's not so precious anymore. Okay, now. So far, any question? Any question, ladies and gentlemen, please tell me. No. A bit lost. <clears throat> a bit lost. Uh. A bit lost. I use normal commodity. Uh. Alright. I use a little bit other commodity. I told you before the internet, right? right. I told you about internet down up is a phone line before I told you before. And this is made from copper. Did I, did I tell you before this is made from copper? I told you, right? Isaac and the rest. Yes? Long time ago, right before they invented fiber optic, copper is limited. Copper is limited. Okay, because every city also want to make more phone lines and need to use copper, some people start to worry that copper will be 100% entirely gone you cannot find new copper does it make sense in under here make sense they're worried that copper will be 100 percent gone like they were used up 100 percent so what happened what happened to the price of copper what happened to the price of copper they almost want to cry Excuse me. Hmm. Price of copper increase. Increase. This is due to scarcity. So far, make sense? Yep, because it's finite. Okay. However, do we still have copper right now? Do we still have copper right now? There is an element. What happened? Yes. Why? Why we still have copper? I thought every house need to have a phone line. So what happened in the end? They developed fiber optic. Fiber optic is using what? So before. After that, they, they, they have new technology. Fiber optics is made using what? I told you before. Hello. Fiber optics is made using what? Glass. Glass is made using what? Glass is made using what? Sand, right? All right. Sand. So because of now, we have a new sub copper, the price of copper will drop. Okay, because now we still have a lot of copper. Okay, and we turn the internet to fiber optic. And we have abundance of sand. So the sand price is also very low. All right? Abundance of sand. Why is it related to money? Because it's the same concept. Right? It's the same concept. If money is scarce, what will happen to the price of money? If money is scarce, what will happen to the price of money? 
increase, right? So the price of money is interest rate. So interest rate increase. If money become abundant, like you print too much money, which is not good for the economy, what will happen to the price of money? It will decrease. All right. Make sense? Does it make sense? Is it better? Type in better if it's better. Type in not better at all. I'm more confused. Type in confused then. Yes? So we just put this concept into a diagram. That's all. We just put this concept into a diagram. And this is the diagram. Okay? If we print more money, which means increase money supply, is print more, right? Print more money means what? The money value will go down. All right? If we do contractionary, contractionary, it will be money supply decrease. If money supply decrease, interest rate will go up because now we have scarcity of money. All right? Any other question? Before I move on to the next one. Yes? So I want to ask about inflation. Uh, mm. Inflation is basically the value of money decreasing, right? Does right. this have anything to do with that? Value of money decreasing, yeah. This one, value of money decreasing. Mm. Okay, value of money decreasing. You can see it's because of what? We print more money now. Print more money is here. Print more money is like MS1 increase to MS2. So we always say when we print more money, there will be inflation, right? When we print more money, we will have inflation, right? So when we print more money, why we have inflation? Because we have too much money chasing two few goods because the value of money already dropped, which means the same money now can buy lesser goods and services. So they are all related, interrelated, right? Okay, now the rest. Okay, now. That mean, okay, this time. I mean, okay, if you're okay. I mean, not okay if you're not okay. Okay, since a few of you say okay, let's have a break. Assume that everyone is already okay. So during the break this time, I will need you to fill up my feedback form. It's already in your email. So after you fill out the feedback form, put here, done please put a thumbs up in my done during your break time because miss Kausala want to collect it by today so during a break time or if you don't want to go to toilet or coffee break please help me to finish the feedback form right now yeah which you should be very very honest doesn't matter lah. score only one right i also don't care about score one right you just be honest.